What is up guys, this is Max Square bringing you another tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you two things. One, how to get a dynamic blur inside of Photoshop, and then how to use that to get a really cool folder background for your launchpad icons. It's a pretty simple technique, so let's just jump right into the video. So like I said, we're gonna be using Photoshop, so let's go ahead and open that. Once it is open, I'm gonna create a new document, and you wanna set the width to 256, and then the same thing for the height. And I'm gonna be using 144 for the resolution so it will work for Retina. I'm just gonna call this folder background blur, folder icon blur, whatever you wanna call it. Select OK. Now I'm just gonna select Command O to jump right into our canvas. So now that we have our document set up, we wanna grab any image. It really does not matter what you bring in. You won't be seeing it in the end result. So I'm just gonna grab the first thing I see here. Just grab your image and make sure you fit it to the canvas. So I'm just gonna be holding Alt and Shift as I scale it up so that it keeps its position and its proportion. After that, you can go ahead and delete your background layer. So you should just be left with the image you brought in. Go ahead and duplicate that by using the shortcut Command J. You go up to Filter, Blur, and then select Gaussian Blur. Now 10 pixels works really well for me, but it's really up to you, whatever suits your needs. And then we can just select OK. Then we wanna create the layer that will blur the background. So I'm gonna be using a rounded rectangle. And to do this really quickly, I'm just gonna click anywhere on the canvas, and then I'm gonna select the width to 256, and then the same for the height. And I'm gonna be using a 50 pixel radius for all of the corners. So it's gonna put it off of the canvas, so just select the layer once again, then select Command A. Then we can align our object to the center of the canvas. Then we can just select Select, and then Deselect to get rid of those lines. Then we can just customize our shape. I'm gonna take off the stroke here, and I'm just gonna use a white fill color. So now what you wanna do is position the rectangle or whatever shape you're using for the background layer and drag it between the two images. So of course it's going to disappear. Then select the top layer and then right click and select create clipping mask. Now we do not need this bottom layer anymore so we can go ahead and delete that. Now if you deleted the background layer when we first set up the document, you should get the transparency grid behind the icon. Now the last thing we wanna do is select the top layer, go to layer, layer mask, hide all. Then we want to bring down the opacity of the rounded rectangle to something pretty low. I'm using 35% as it works really well. Then we can go ahead and save it. I wanna save it as a PNG so we can get that transparency. So what we wanna name this is ECSB underscore group. Then we want to duplicate that and name it the same thing but adding at two times. Now select the one that does not say at two times, so just ECSB underscore group. Double click it to open it in preview. And we want to adjust the size to 128 by 128. We can just save that and then close preview. Now you want to select both of those images, copy it, and then open up a new tab or window and then select Command Shift G, and you wanna paste in this path, and I'll put this in the description so you can easily just copy and paste it. So once you arrive here, you wanna just paste those two documents in, select Apply All, and then Replace. You can put in your administrator password just to verify it. Then we wanna open up Terminal, and type in Kill All, whoops, Doc, and that's Kill All space capital D Doc. Our dock will relaunch. And now when we enter into our launch pad, you'll see that the folder icon is blurred. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this will work with absolutely anything you put behind it. So you could use an image, anything. I can't think of too much right now, but like I said, it will work with anything you will use it for. Well guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed and I really do hope this helped you. If so, please be sure to hit a like. It really helps the channel out a lot. If you would like to see more tutorials, reviews, tips, and more, be sure to subscribe for many, many more videos. Thanks guys for watching and I will catch you in my next video.